Hey everyone and welcome. In this video, we're going to be working together on setting up an Active Directory domain for the purpose of doing some Active Directory pen testing and red teaming exercises and to try different attacks like Kerberos attacks, for example. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the lab from scratch using Windows evaluation versions and VMware Workstation. This is my software of choice, but if you prefer to use something else, feel free. It's going to be working hopefully absolutely the same. I haven't tried this on VirtualBox, but I would assume it should work the same without any issues. What we will be using in this lab is Windows evaluation versions. So I am under the assumption that you would have downloaded those already and you've set up your virtualization environment, be it VMware, VirtualBox, Hyper-V, whatever that is that you prefer to use. And we're going to take it from there. So we're going to start by setting up the domain controller, creating a domain, setting up the workstation, adding it to the domain, and we're going to be setting up some user accounts so you can try different attack techniques, for example, Kerberos attacks and so on. So if you are well-versed with creating domains and you are well-versed with creating domain controllers and adding workstations to the domain, you could skip straight ahead to the account creation where we're going to be configuring some of these accounts. Keep in mind that this doesn't cover every single attack factor. This is just to give you a quick idea of how the setup can work and then the rest is up to you. All right, so let's get started. So here I'm starting by installing the Windows Server 2019 evaluation version. And again, I'm using VMware Workstation here. After I booted my VM using the ISO image, I'm going to start the installation process. I'm selecting the English language. Feel free to select whatever language you prefer. And we're going to click on next and start the installation. You're going to get four options here, as you can see. The two different categories here is the desktop experience and the other version, which is without the desktop experience. The desktop experience basically means that you're going to have a graphical interface, which is what we're mostly used to when we're dealing with Windows operating systems. You could go with the other version if you prefer to, but you're gonna have to be well-versed with the command line and PowerShell and so on. So to make our life easier, we're going to go with the desktop experience. The difference between the standard and the data center versions is a difference in licensing, but because we are using the evaluation version, it really doesn't matter what we pick. So I'm just gonna go with the last option here, which is the data center desktop experience. We're going to click on next, accept the license terms, and here we have two options, either upgrade or custom. Obviously here we are starting from scratch, so there is nothing to upgrade. We're going to go with custom instead. Here we have to select the drive where we want to install our operating system. Since we have one drive only, we don't have any partitions. We're gonna go with the default one and click on next. And give that a few minutes to finish the installation. You'll notice here that I'm speeding up the video on multiple occasions, so I don't keep you waiting. So we'll skip ahead a few minutes. And eventually, you're going to get to a screen where it says that Windows is about to restart. Once it restarts, it needs to do some configuration, get your Windows ready, maybe reboot one or two times, and then you get to choose a password for your administrator account. Now notice here that you don't have the option to change the name of the administrator. So we're going to go with the administrator username, and you're going to pick a password. Once that's done, Windows will finalize the settings and you'll get to log in. So we'll type our password and here we go, we're logged in. The first thing that opens up when you log in into a Windows server is an application called the Server Manager. And this allows you, as the name says, to manage your server. We'll get to that in a moment. So let me close this. And what I'd like to do here is to start by configuring the prerequisites for setting up a domain controller. One of the prerequisites is that we have to have a static IP address. So I'm going to go and get my network information. And the important piece of information here that I want is the default gateway. This is basically the gateway that my VMware software is going to use to communicate with other computers and the internet. And that also gives me the IP address range that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to go into the network settings. I'm going to choose Ethernet and then Adapter Options, and I'm going to go into the Properties. Then I'm going to choose the IPv4 Properties, 
and I'm going to set a static IP address. I'll stick obviously to the same range and let's say my IP address is going to end with 200. The subnet mask is default and I'm going to stick to the same default gateway. This is quite important if you're using VMware or VirtualBox or any virtualization environment. Depending on your network setting, you want to do this to allow your domain controller or your server to communicate with other computers as well. For the preferred DNS server, it doesn't really matter what you put here. It depends on whether you want access to the internet or not. Here, I'm just gonna go with the same IP as my gateway. Now that's done, I'm going to do a quick check to make sure that I can look up Hackers Academy. That works, which tells me that I have internet connectivity and I can reach other computers as well. The second thing I wanna do is I want to rename this computer. I want to give it a name that makes a little bit more sense than the default name that is set up. So for example, here I'm going with DC01, which stands for Domain Controller 1. Once you rename a computer, you're going to have to restart it. So let's go ahead and restart. and we'll log back in. And again, you notice here that once you log in by default, the server manager opens. Let me close this and I'll show you how to open the server manager in case you ended up closing it by mistake. And it's very simple. You go to the start menu, you type server and you'll find the application. So you click the server manager and here we go. This is basically the application that we will be using to set up our domain controller and to manage it going forward. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to add a role or feature to this server. By default, this server doesn't have any roles. It doesn't provide me with any services that I can use. To make this a domain controller, I need to add the Active Directory services to it. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to click Next, and here we are faced with two options whether I want to configure a single server by adding a role or whether I want to install a service remotely. Obviously, we're doing this locally, so I'm going to leave the option as is. And now I have the option to select either this server or other servers. If I'm managing other servers from this app, I will have the option to do that. We don't have any other servers. Again, we're building this lab from scratch. So we're going to stick to our server DC1. And this is the most important bit here. This is where you can select what services do you want to be running on this computer or on this server. So for example, you could see here that we have the web server IIS, meaning that if I install this feature, this computer will have a web server running and I can use it as a web server. For the purpose of our lab, we want this to be a domain controller, meaning that we want to have the Active Directory services installed. So we're going to go ahead and select that Active Directory domain services. That of course will need to install some features. So we're going to leave this as is and we're going to add these features. We'll click on next. We don't need to add anything else for now. So we'll click on next again. And the last option in case we have Active Directory on Azure, we could select that or we can configure that. For now we don't. So we're gonna go ahead and click on next. Then we get to a page where we have to confirm or double check what is it that we want to install. We also have the option to allow the server to restart automatically if it needs to, and I'm going to select that. And lastly, the installation starts. That's going to take a while, so again, I'm going to fast forward the video here. Once that is done, you'll notice this yellow triangle appearing next to the flag icon. This means that there is something that I need to pay attention to. So let's go ahead and click on that. And you'll notice there's a message that says, promote this server to a domain controller. Because now we have Active Directory services running on this computer, I can finally promote it to become a domain controller. And a domain controller, if you're not familiar with the term, allows me to manage the Active Directory. So I'm going to do just that. I'll click on the Promote the Server. And let's go ahead and configure the Active Directory services. The first option is that we have to choose whether we want to add this domain controller to an existing domain, whether we want to create a new domain in an existing forest or whether we want to add a new forest. If you're not familiar with this terminology, don't worry too much about it. 
We explain this in our courses. But very briefly, what's happening here is that if you already created a domain and you want to add the server to it, then you could use the first option. Or if you have an already existing forest with multiple trees, then you could use the second option. Or the last option, which is what we're going to be using, is if you're creating it from scratch. So you don't have a domain to start with. You don't have a forest to start with. So we're going to be using the last option. And here I am going to be defining the name of the domain. I'm going to go with hackersacademy.local. As a best practice, you want to avoid domains that could be potentially already used. So something like hackersacademy.com, for example, it's already in use. So I want to avoid that. Hackersacademy.local is not being in use. So I'm going to go with this. This is where we decide on the compatibility level. So here, for example, we are saying that we will be compatible backwards to Windows 2016. You could leave this as is as well. And then we have to set up a password for the restore mode. So go ahead and type in a password here. And click on next. You don't have to worry too much about DNS delegation. Once we click on next, we then are going to validate the domain name. Click on next. And that takes us to the next screen where you have to choose the location for the Active Directory database. That's not something that you normally want to change, so you can leave it as is as well. And then lastly, there's going to be a prerequisite check. You might notice some yellow triangles here that are requiring your attention, uh, but none of that really matters for now. There are some security settings that you really don't need to be too concerned about. Again, we are setting this up to be vulnerable. So you don't want to be locking it down before you even begin. So we'll leave that as is and click on install. It's going to take a while, so please be patient. I'll forward the video a little bit. And then once the installation is done, you will be required to reboot your machine. So go ahead and restart. And when you get the login screen, notice now that we have the domain name on the login prompt before the administrator username, which means now we're logging into the domain. So we'll type the password and here we are, we're logged in. Now that we finished setting up our domain controller, the next step is going to be setting up our workstation and then adding it to the domain. Now that we have finished setting up our domain controller, let's finish setting up our workstation. So this is going to be the client in the Active Directory or one of the computers that will be joined to the Active Directory. For that, I'm using a Windows 10 evaluation version and I'm going to log in with the default user and password. Once you're logged in, we have to set up some prerequisites very similar to what we've done with the domain controller. So to start with, I need to configure a static IP address. So let's do this quickly together. We're going to change the adapter options. Go into the properties and set a static IP. Now, the important thing here to notice is that my default gateway and my DNS server are the IP addresses for the domain controller. Keep in mind here, though, that the DNS IP must be that of the domain controller. Otherwise, the workstation is not going to be able to join the domain. The second thing that we want to do as well is we want to change the computer name to something a little bit more meaningful, and then we want to join the domain. So let's go ahead and do that by changing the settings on the computer. I'll change the computer name and here I'm just going to call it PC1. And then I want to have it join the domain. I don't want it to be part of a workgroup. And what's my domain name? It's hackersacademy.local. If you get this prompt, that means your computer, which is the workstation here, can communicate with the domain controller. That's a good thing. So now you need to input the username and the password for the administrator of the domain controller. If you're not getting this prompt, you're going to get an error message that says that the domain controller is not reachable. So you need to double check and re-verify your network settings. 
So let's go ahead and put the credentials for the administrator. And here we go. We get a welcome message to hackersacademy.local domain. Perfect. So now we are part of the domain. We'll go ahead and restart this machine. And while we restart, let me go back to the domain controller. And I need to create a domain user so that I can log in with the Windows 10 workstation. So I'm going to go back to my server manager. I'll go to the tools and Active Directory users and computers. This is where you're going to be doing quite a bit of the administration work. This is the name of our domain. And if you open it, here we have all the Active Directory objects. So for example, if you go into the computer's container, you'll see that a computer object has been automatically created for PC01 that we just joined the domain with. And if we go to the users container, there's a bunch of built-in default users, but we want to create a new one that will allow us to log into PC01. So I'm going to go ahead and right click, new user. Give it whatever name here that you prefer. I'm just using user one here and specify the logon name. This is the name that you will be using to log in. Put a password and make sure here that you meet the password complexity rules. And I'm going to uncheck the box here that says the user has to change the password when they log in next. And that's about it. Let's go back to our PC. And we're going to select another user. The IE user is a user that logs in locally to this computer. That's not what we want. We want a user that allows us to log into the domain. So let's go and select another user. And notice here that we're signing into Hackers Academy. We're no longer signing in locally to this computer. So now we can use the user that we just created, user one. Put in the password and here we go. Perfect. So now we're logged in and we are joined to the domain. This is going to be your attack machine. In our course, we start with the premise that you've compromised the machine one way or another. Maybe you're in a red teaming engagement. You managed to fish a user, steal their credentials and log into their machine. Maybe you managed to have them click on a malicious link, download an executable. You got a shell on their computer. Somehow, one way or another, you managed to compromise their machine. And then from there on, what happens next? So in the lab environment, this is going to be your attack machine. This is the user that you just compromised with low privileges. So we're gonna have to figure out a way to escalate our privileges and then from there on, move on to the other computers, other servers on the domain, and hopefully eventually compromise the Active Directory in its entirety. All right, so I hope you found this useful. In the next video, we're going to set up a few user accounts that will allow us to play with some different attack techniques, including some Kerberos attacks. So go ahead, finish your setup, and I will see you soon in the next video.